Hello everybody, welcome back to your fifth and final lesson on our topic of mountains. Now today's lesson is going to be a summary lesson where we're going to look back over the, the four of the lessons that we've already done, recap over some of that key knowledge, and then your assignment for today is going to be a quiz. So I do recommend that throughout this, um, throughout this lesson, this YouTube lesson, that you're really listening to what's on each of the different slides. And if you have on you some paper and pen, make some notes about some of the key information and then this will help you when you come to do your quiz on your assignment. So your success criteria for today is to be able to name the main features of mountains, to be able to locate and name famous mountains in both the UK and around the whole world, um, to be able to explain how different types of mountains are formed, to be able to explain what it's like to live on and around mountains, as well as be able to name some of the adaptions that animals and plants have made to be able to live successfully on mountains. So let's start then with the main features of a mountain. Well, first off, what actually is a mountain? So mountains are areas of land that are much higher than, than the land that's surrounding them. And they're actually usually higher and steeper than a hill. So generally they're over 600 meters high and they're often found together in a group, which is called a mountain range. So let's look at some of the key features then. We've got the summit, which is the very top of the mountain. And then we've got the snow line. So above the here, above the snow line is where snow and ice cover the mountain all year round constantly. Below the snow line is where snow might cover it some of the year, uh, but there's no snow on the mountain the rest of the year. We've also got a tree line, which is the highest point that um, forests and trees are found. So you can see here, this is our tree line. Um, and we've got a ridge. A ridge is a long, narrow, high section of land. We've also got an outcrop, outcrop, sorry. An outcrop is a rock formation that's visible from the surface. So here's an example of a outcrop. A valley is um, an area of low land between um, two mountains. So you can see here, this is a valley. It's where the land goes in. A slope is an area of ground that's increasing in height. So it's, um, it's going up in a slope, it's on a diagonal. Whereas a plateau is an area of flat high ground. So this is more flat and it's high up. Um, we've also got the foot, which is the, uh, what we call the bottom of the mountain. And the face is what we call the side of the mountain. So they are our key features of mountains. These are the different, these are the names that we call the different parts of the mountains. So we know what the key features are. Let's look at some famous mountains around the world. Okay, so number one, we have Mount Blanc. Now, Mount Blanc is located in Europe. It's actually located on the border between Italy and France. And if you remember back to our lesson, we did uh, talk about how Mount Blanc um, has actually been in lots of um, sort of argument. There's been lots of arguments between Italy and France about who actually owns Mount Blanc and which land does it rest on. And it actually lands, lies straight on the boundary between Italy and France. We've also got Mount Rainier, which is in America. Mount Rainier has lots of visitors all year round and um, is in a national park. You can see here, there's a mixture of mountain ranges and grassy land. We've also got the Andes Mountains. Now, if you remember back to the lesson, the Andes Mountains actually create the spine of South America and they go across seven countries. You can see here that it's basically just a long stretch of mountains that come together to create sort of a chain. We've also got Mount Everest, which is actually the highest mountain in the world. You can see it's located here. It's the lightest part of the map, which highlights to us that it's the highest part of the map, it's the highest mountain in the world. And then we've also got Count Kilimanjaro, which is in Africa. As you can see here, it is just above the equator. So there are our five famous mountains around the world. Let's look more specifically at the UK then. Let's look at the different mountains. So number one, in Wales, we have Mount Snowdon, which is located in North Wales. In the southeast of Northern Ireland, we have Slieve Donard, which again attracts lots of tourists. Located in um, the, Lake, the Lake District in Cumbria, we have Scaffold Pike, which is located here. That's in England. In Scotland, which is actually uh, the tallest mountain in England, is Ben Nevis. 
And then located in the Peak District, which is just about an hour away from Byron Ward, is Kinderscout. So that's just located in the Peak District, around an hour away from us. So they are our five, um, they are the five mountains in the UK that we have been looking at. Okay then, so we've looked at the different mountains, but how are these mountains formed? So there's actually five different types of mountains. We have fold mountains, we have plateau mountains, dome mountains, volcanic mountains, and fault black mountains. And each of these different mountains are actually um, formed completely differently. So fold mountains actually occur when tectonic plates collide together. So they come crashing in together and they collide and they push up to create a mountain. Uh, volcanic mountains are actually just formed around volcanoes, so it's the layers of old ash that have um, frozen over, so you can see here's an example of a volcano mountain. Fault block mountains are actually um, due to cracks in the Earth's surface open up and then some rock is pushed up while other parts of rock are pushed down. So you can see here the low areas is where rock has been pushed down and the higher areas where uh, rock has been pushed upwards. We've also got dome mountains, which is where magma is forced up between the crust and mantle, but it doesn't ever flow out. So it actually creates a sort of balloon bubble in the earth, um, creating a dome mountain. And lastly, we have plateau mountains, which are quite different um, to all of the other mountains uh, because they're not formed by something being added. They're actually formed uh, through materials being taken away through erosion. This leaves deep valleys or gorges next to high cliffs. So you can see here in the valleys, the low parts of the mountains, um, that is due to erosion. So that could be through to um, weathering, for example. And the, um, the erosion takes away the material of the rock and it leaves high cliffs, which leaves us plateau mountains. OK, so that is the five different types of mountains and how they are formed. And finally, then, um, in our last lesson yesterday, we actually talked about the difficulties of living on a mountain and how different animals and plants have had to adapt to live on mountains. So then the three difficulties that we looked at into living on a mountain was that it's difficult to build roads and railways. It's also really difficult to live and farm on mountains. Um, this is due to the rocky terrain, um, making, it, um, making it not very um, fertile land for them to grow plants. Um, and there's also um, lots of hostile weather and low oxygen levels. And we actually spoke about how um, if you're um, if you're a tourist and you go climbing up a really tall mountain, you actually have to take oxygen masks to help you breathe because the air gets really thin. Uh, we also talked about how um, the American Uru tribe have actually adapted themselves to having bigger hearts and lungs, which helps them breathe better with the thin oxygen. So then let's look at three different animals and two um, plants and how they adapted to live on mountains. So we have got the brown bear. Um, so the brown bear has adapted itself by having a really thick fur coat and a big uh, layer of fat. And this actually helps to insulate them from the cold weather. Um, so they don't feel the cold as, um, as much and they're able to walk around in the snow and they're fine. Uh, brown bears also have really long but blunt claws that help them dig up food. So their claws don't actually retract back into their paws. They're always out. Um, so they're blunt from uh, walking on um, the different terrain. But this is OK because they're still really large um, and it helps them dig up food. So they can, they're able to dig up the, um, the really hard, rocky ground um, and dig up some food. We've also got bighorn sheep. Um, bighorn sheep have adapted as now they've got um, they've actually got two parts to their hoof. So they've got the really soft, spongy middle part of their hoof, and then they've got a really um, sort of a harder outer edge. Um, and the difference in the different in the two parts of their hoof, sorry, actually help them to keep a balance and keep a really good grip on the steep, rocky surfaces that they have to walk on. And we've also got mountain hares, which are like a rabbit, and their fur actually changes. They change, um, they shed their fur twice a year. Um, their fur changes colour to help them camouflage into their surroundings. So in winter, they are more of a, um, they have more of a brownie fur to match their um, surroundings. Whereas in the winter, they have a really white fur to match their surroundings of their snow. Their winter coat is actually really thick as well. And they've also got really big paws and really furry paws in the winter. 
Uh, the larger pores actually allow them to have a bigger surface area, which means they're less likely to sink in. If they had really tiny, um, tiny pores and tiny feet, they would actually sink very quickly into the snow and they wouldn't be able to run very quickly. So we've also got two types of trees as well that we can look at and how they have adapted to living in the really cold mountain um, areas. So we've got spruce trees. So spruce trees have really waxy needles on a really tough bark. So the waxy needles actually protect them from the bitter cold weather. So it protects the needles. So the needles aren't um, exposed to the cold weather so they don't die. They've got a really thick layer of wax around them. And the tough bark of the actual tree actually protects the tree from predators. So it's harder for predators to attack the tree and bite it and break it. We've also got pine trees and pine, the leaves on pine trees are actually very needle-like. So they're very long and thin. This means that they're not, they're not a good option, they're not a good food option for predators, which keeps the predators at bay as they're not going to go, want to go and eat the pine leaves. Okay, so there we have looked at what mountains are, the different features of mountains. We've looked at famous mountains around the world and uh, famous mountains in the UK. We've also looked at how the different types of mountains and how each different type of mountains are formed. And then finally, we've looked at the difficulties of living on a mountain and the animals and plant adapt adaptations. Um, so they're able to live on mountains successfully. So for your assignment today, then your assignment is going to be posted as a quiz. So what I recommend you doing is you going back through the video, pausing it and having a look at the different slides. Um, you could even maybe write down some facts and some information to help you answer the quiz cor um, questions correctly. Take your time answering the questions. If you're unsure about any, um, you could possibly go and research the answer or think back through and watch this video, video back through um, to help you answer because all of the answers to the quiz are on this lesson. I look forward to seeing how well you do in your quiz um, and thank you for um, doing some really good listening and learning for our mountains topic. Okay, thank you.